began with one of the Republican leaders who expressed some doubts about the president's threatened tariffs. That's Missouri's Senator Roy Blunt. Welcome to the program. What can you tell us about this declaration of what was agreed to with Mexico? Is there more to it than the press release? Well, I talked to the president Friday night, actually, and he, uh, he of course, uh, understood that uh, I'm always pretty reluctant to use tariffs. I'm more of an open the markets kind of guy rather than look for ways to close those markets. But uh, he was, I think, appropriately pleased with the, the agreement that's been made. Uh, about 10 days ago, we made an agreement with Guatemala to work with them on that southern border of Mexico, the northern border of Guatemala. Having the Mexicans agree to be a big part of that uh, is a huge thing. And, and I actually Weren't think... Weren't they already going to do that? I don't know that they were. You know, no deal is done till it's done and announced. It's like were the Chinese going to do all the things they agreed to that suddenly at a meeting a month ago they decided they weren't going to do that they had agreed to. I'm not sure if that discussion had occurred before or not, but I think both presidents here have tried to find a good place to be. Uh, the new president of Mexico, frankly, has surprised me in his willingness to reach out. That rally that was talked about last night uh, in Tijuana was a rally that honored both a growing Mexico and a strong friendship with the United States. So I thought that was a good thing. They have 50 people. The president told me this the Friday night on the phone. They currently have 50 people, 5-0, on the Guatemalan border. Uh, I think we're going to get closer to about, about 6,000 Mexican uh, National Guard down there helping with that. We've already announced, I think, we're, we were sending uh, previous week about 150 people to work with the Guatemalans. Obviously, if you look at sort of the funnel of Mexico in your mind, it's easier to secure that bottom border than it is the big border between us and Mexico. And frankly, also, Margaret, it can't be a good thing for Mexico to have hundreds of thousands or even tens of thousands of people kind of wandering through the country from south to north. I think this is a big win for both sides. And uh, I think the president's willingness to use tariffs, even though I'm not a big supporter of tariffs. He is, and his willingness to use that yeah. probably helped produce a result. I hope we don't have to go back to that as an issue again with Mexico. But well, the president uh, tweeted this morning that tariffs remain on the table, and as you just said, this is an agreement in principle. It's not a signed binding document, right? Well, I, I think so they're, are, are I think they're both that... committed to it. I think if you listen to the president of Mexico yesterday, there's no reason to believe that they don't understand the important part of this. You know, if we look at this as a, a one-way win, that the only country that's affected by all these people coming through Mexico is the United States, that's the wrong way to look at it. This so you is want actually, more aid to Central America? Uh, of course That I wasn't do. detailed in that declaration. I think more aid to Central America is a good thing to try to help stabilize those economies in ways that are good, because they're our neighbors. This is our neighborhood. We should be interested in our neighborhood. But the principal point is that the Mexican government itself and the, the people of Mexico will benefit from trying to get this particular movement of people illegally through their country, with people mm -hmm. taking them illegally through their country, with all kinds of cartel and other involvement, cannot be a good thing for Mexico. Uh, and we're going to be working together with Mexico and Guatemala to get this under control at the easiest place to get it under control, which was the Mexico-Guatemala border. Do you know what these side agreements are that the president announced? I don't know exactly what the side agreements are. I, I do understand that what I just mentioned. I also b understand that there's an agreement that people who do come through the system mm -hmm. while they're waiting for their asylum claim to be dealt with will be waiting in Mexico rather than here. And if you do those two things, you know... So, I mean, in, in your home state, agricultural people. is huge. So the president's declaration that there's an agricultural deal, you don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, is, but I know it's good Missouri's for my state. Missouri's second largest trading partner. It, you have it, like three billion in goods. It's, it's a huge thing for my state. And the whole NAFTA agreement has been really good for uh, particularly the middle of the country. We'd be the fifth most negatively impacted state if NAFTA went away. Do you and, think that uh, autos and agriculture are the two re the two things that probably are our biggest connections right now to but Mexico? What I hear you saying is for you on this, the ends justify the means. But at the same time, this kind of brinksmanship, going to the edge with tariffs, can you reuse that threat? I mean, if, if the deal's not done, you have to keep talking. 
that must make you very concerned. I, now, I think the would bigger Republicans message here, block if, tariffs if, if, if the would, president tried to do this. If I was guessing, well, that's very hypothetical. I think the biggest lesson here, probably the biggest message here, is now not to Mexico, but to China, that the president is clearly willing to use tariffs. And actually, the president believes that tariffs are a significant positive economic tool. Uh, lots of people in the country agree with that. That's never been my view, but mm -hmm. it's always been the president's view. So he is consistently willing to use something that uh, he has always said was should be part of our arsenal. I know a part of the immigration conversation is what to do with the migrants already here. You've been raising concern that funding is about to run out for the unaccompanied minor program uh, within uh, 30 days. When will Congress be voting on this? Well, thank you for letting me talk about that. I, I think this is truly a humanitarian crisis. I hope our, our friends on the other side, the Democrats, will step up and join us in providing the money needed to take care of unaccompanied kids. Now, it's important to understand these are not kids who've been separated from their parents. This is no argument about separating kids from their parents. These are kids who are let under 18 who came on their own. About 30% of them mm -hmm. are under 12 or so. Uh, the others are teenagers of various ages, but they're minors. They get here on their own. Um, and gonna, there's no we're going to have about 88,000 yeah. come this year. 88,000 kids by themselves. And everybody, when they think about this, surely understands you can't let 12 and 13 and 14-year-old boys and girls, you can't say, okay, we don't have any place to go with mm -hmm. you, and it's illegal to return you back to your home country. We're just going to let you loose in the United States, and you you show up at some future time to when will that vote have be? your case handled. Well, it should have been, I think, when we voted on the, the other emergency, but hopefully it will be soon. Okay. $2.8 billion would go to homeland, go mm -hmm. not to Homeland Security, but Health and Human Services for the sole purpose okay. of taking care of these kids who are here by themselves, and we need to deal with that. Senator, thank you. Thank you.